Hi, my name is Melinda Calway, and today I'm going to be painting a portrait of two girls and their dog. These are two young, gorgeous girls, and I start off with painting a first coat on the face. And as I start, it looks it looks quite uh, you know dark until I start putting the hair in, and you'll notice the face starts looking lighter and lighter as dark colors um, appear around it to give it contrast. And I'm turning this upside down sometimes to just get a nice soft line around uh, a cheek here and there. I'm also painting the dog at the same time, putting a base layer down on everybody so that I can map out where everything and everybody is so that I can work on it a little bit better. When I first started out with watercolor, I said I would never do portraits because they're just way too hard. Well, I still think they're pretty hard and I don't do them that often, but I'm starting to enjoy doing them a little bit more. And I'm putting the eyes in and the nose here and there, and I'm working on all three portraits at the same time. Uh, the dog, I'm working on it a little quicker because I find that the dog is a little bit easier because if it's not exactly right, it still looks like the same dog. But with portraits, if it's not exactly right, it sometimes doesn't look like the right person. So um, I do find that a little bit more challenging. And I'm darkening up the hair now and putting in the blouse. So pretty much everything is covered that I want to get covered, with, at least with the first coat. And uh, I'm going to darken up the eyes as I go. And it's almost like putting on makeup on, on the faces so that you can build it up, putting, in the, putting on lipstick. And I will darken the eyes up as I go. And, and the sh uh, circles around the eyes, too, need to be a little bit darker because the, the eyes are set into the face a little bit, and the shadows are what make it look like they're set in. Um, working on the hands here, putting in a little bit of cast shadows on the hands and the shapes and colors in between the fingers to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. And again, I let the face dry, then I come back and put another coat on it. And every time I put some paint on the face or part, I get a damp brush and I soften the edges as I go along so that it doesn't look like there's hard edges on the face. With, especially with young children, you want the face to look nice and um, soft and smooth, otherwise it looks like they're got wrinkles and they look older. So you want to keep that in mind. Now you'll notice as I darken up uh, the hair, the face starts looking lighter again. So I will have to come back and, and darken up the face. And uh, the dog's face, I've got fairly, um, you know, one coat on it and I'll come back and I will do another coat. But I'm doing the background right now, so I'm wetting it first and just bringing in the colors. And I'm putting in the colors that I've already used in the painting, so I'm just kind of mopping up some colors from my palette and, and putting those in there. So now I'm, I'm putting the dog, uh, his fur or hair on him, making it a little darker, and going back over to his face and darkening all that up and making it look, because he's, he's a black dog, even though he has a little bit of color uh, here and there. So his eyes are probably dark enough by now, and I'm just putting in this other dark. And I'll come back and do some touch-up here and there, but it, the dog is pretty close to being done now. And I will put in a little bit more uh, detail on the shirt and on the, the girl on the right arm. And as I come in, I'm putting in her nose and darkening up her hair a little bit here and there. Now, as the background dries, I'm going to come back and, and put in some strands of hair, um, as you can see I'm doing now, and that just makes it look a little bit more real. Uh, some people think it looks like their hair is messy, but nah, it, it, it adds a lot to the picture. So now I'm darkening up their eyes, and I, I want to try and make them look like they're looking right at us as the viewer. Sometimes that's a little bit tricky to do, so um, I'm working on that. And you've got to get the eyes not too big and not too small. They have to work and they have to fit into the socket and depending on the way the head is turned. Uh, so you want to make sure you look at your reference photo and, and make that work for you. So uh, if you want to see any more of my videos, check out my YouTube channel. You go to YouTube and just type in Melinda Calway and I have other uh, hyperlapse films like this that you can check out. And I also have some slower ones that you can look at that are um, more teaching that you can follow along and do and simpler ones too. This one probably took me, uh, I don't know, between 15 and 20 hours, but it's really neat to be able to 
condense it into five minutes so that you can actually see what I'm doing and not get totally bored. Um, but it is it is kind of fun to do, and you can see I'm adding some some detail and I'm signing it now and taking off the tape. Ta-da!